Greetings friends, David Marks here. In this tutorial, I'm going to discuss the toolbar in Adobe Photoshop Lightroom Classic. We're not going to make great art in this tutorial, but if you stick with me for these toolbar tips, then I bet that we can speed up your Lightroom workflow. So let's jump right in and let's get started. Tip number one, stop hiding the toolbar. You wouldn't believe how many photographers I teach each year who've accidentally hidden their toolbar away and who have no idea what they're missing. If you can't see this gray strip right here at the bottom of your screen, then you too might be missing this essential feature. To show or hide the toolbar, press the letter T on your keyboard. Now, you might be able to limp along if you hide the toolbar away in the library module. But if you make this critical element disappear while working in the develop module, then you will never be able to find some super useful features like the visualize spots control when you're working with tools like Lightroom's healing brush. To compound this injustice, if you accidentally press the letter T and hide your toolbar away, then it will remain hidden no matter how many times you restart the program. So don't do that. Tip number two. The factory default setting for the toolbar lacks some essential buttons. The thing that most Lightroom users miss is that we can add or subtract useful features from our toolbar. Which options you can add or remove depend upon which view mode you are using in the library module. Here in the grid view, for example, I like to add the ratings option to the toolbar. To do this, I need to hold down the left button on my mouse while hovering over this little triangle here. And then I need to scroll down in this awkward floating menu. At a bare minimum, I like to have the sorting, the rating, and the thumbnail size options active. I rarely use the metadata painter tool, so I'm going to remove it from the toolbar. Now, I would love to tell you that adding these features onto the toolbar in the library module grid view is the end of it, but that's not true. And that brings us to tip number three. Tip three the zoom slider is super useful when you are in the loop view mode. Why Adobe set things up this way a decade ago and why this UI lunacy persists is beyond me. The whole purpose of the loop view is to let you explore critical details of your image before you jump over to the develop module. To accomplish this goal, we need to be able to zoom in and zoom out with ease. If you know your keyboard shortcuts, then you might be okay in here. But if you're unaware of these secrets, then this part of the program is not terribly useful. What benefits everyone is to show the zoom slider. And to do that, I need to bring the mouse, the cursor, back over here. I need to hold down the left mouse button, and I need to come down and add zoom to the toolbar. Once I've added this simple control, then I can drag the control point up to zoom in or down to zoom out. I can also double click the word zoom right here whenever I want to instantly jump to 100% view. While we're in this view mode, unless you're scanning a lot of film, I see no reason why most digital photographers need to keep the rotate buttons visible at this point. To remove them, I'll click here and I will uncheck Rotate. If we jump into Lightroom Classic's Develop module, then we will find that some other super useful features are missing here too. From the factory, Lightroom's toolbar in the Develop module is also missing that zoom slider, and the toolbar in this part of the program is also missing the Show Grid control. The grid overlay is very useful when you're working with the transform tool on cityscapes or architectural exteriors. Finally, 
the factory default setup prominently features the soft proofing option. I have no problem with what soft proofing does for the tiny subset of advanced photographers who make their own color inkjet prints and who are working with precisely calibrated monitors. But if you're not a fine art printmaker, or if you're not working with a true calibrated display, then the soft proofing feature is completely useless, and there's no reason to keep this option pinned to the toolbar. Tip number five, the library module viewing modes. I have an in-depth tutorial on how I use each of the view modes in the library module, so I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on each of these today. But I do want to remind you that the first four icons here are all different ways of viewing your images or a grid full of photos. If you want to check on the details in one of your photos, then select it on the grid, and then you can tap on this icon here to switch over to Classics Loop View. Likewise, if you want to compare the fine details in two images side by side, then we can hop back to the grid view. We can select two images using a shift or a command click. And then we can tap this XY icon to switch to Classics Compare view. The point I want to make is that these first four icons are all useful when you're evaluating your images and you're trying to find the very best one. The last button in this section, though, the one with a person's face on it does something different. Unlike the others in this section, activating this button triggers Classic's Detect Faces search mode. Once you enter this mode, Lightroom uses artificial intelligence to try and find and identify all of the faces in your images. While this option can be useful, the point that I want to make is that this is a very different type of tool. Unlike the icons further to the left, the Detect People mode is of no use for landscape or macro photographers. And even you portrait folks might not want to use this tool unless you are aware of some of the strengths and weaknesses of Classic's face detection system. Bonus tip number six, the sort order. My final workflow tip here is to pay careful attention to this area. The setting that you pick for the sort order determines what criteria Lightroom uses to arrange the photos on the grid or the film strip. Ordinarily, I like to sort my images by capture time so that I can scroll through them in chronological order. With A to Z selected, my oldest images are here at the top left and my newest ones are down there at the bottom. If I reverse this, so that I'm in descending order, then my most recent photos are right up here at the very top. And as I scroll down, I'm moving back in time. There are a couple of other sort order choices that can be extremely useful from time to time. If I wanna see my highest rated images first and my unrated photos last, then I can switch the sort order to rating and set the configuration so that it is Z to A. Finally, once in a blue moon, I find myself working on a project where I need vertical images only. If I'm hunting for images shot with a vertical orientation rather than these, which are horizontal, then the easiest way to separate that type of photo from all of the others is to click here and to set the sort order to aspect ratio. Now, the verticals come first and the horizontals come last, if I'm in A to Z. And if I were to flip it, then all the horizontals would be first and the verticals at the very bottom. Just so you know, Classic actually recognizes three aspect ratios. We have vertical images, we have horizontal images, but we also have these, which Lightroom recognizes as squares. And if you crop something to one-to-one -to -one, using the aspect ratios 
in the develop module. Then classic will group all of your squares together when you're sorting this way. I don't find myself searching for verticals or squares very often, but once you know this trick, you can save yourself a ton of time by using this toolbar option. Well, there you go. I hope that you found this lesson helpful and that some of these tricks will dramatically enhance your everyday life. If you learned something today, then please leave us a like or a comment down below and don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in our next tutorial.